Welcome, welcome friends to my channel. <laughs> I was going back and reading some comments. I had, obviously I had missed some. <laughs> I had missed some, excuse me. Still, I'm fighting it cool just a little bit there. I'm about to, I think I'm over the hill. But, uh. Welcome to my channel, Spiritual Guidance 1111. I hope you, uh, for I want to thank you for, for tuning in and watching me, and listening to what I have to say. And I, I, I man, I love your comments. God, I, some of them I, I laugh out loud at my, my bride. She said, what you laughing at? No, so I'm laughing at that comment. And then I read it to her and, you know, it, it, get a kick out of it. Some of them are heartfelt too, I'm going to tell you that. Heartfelt. I, I may have to end up doing uh, just a video of just Q&A, just question and answer because there's a lot of people now that's starting to, uh, if I do a reading, if I can get through this pretty quickly, if I do a reading, I want you to know that I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a preacher or a counselor, therapist. I'm going to probably leave something out. I'm not an actor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm just a damn old country boy. They got a gift. I am a Christian, and I love God. He is my best friend. I talk to him all the time. I just talk to him to, to bless me with this reading and to deliver to you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, because there's a big difference there. Yeah. Sometimes when the meal come in, you get some meal that you really don't want. <laughs> that might be the same thing with this message. You really don't want to hear it, but it is what it is. Anyway, let's get back to, I have, uh, oh, let me get my glass in here. It'd be a whole lot better. Uh, Jess, Jesse, instant message me. I want to know, what's your political party? <laughs> oh, mercy. Let me just put it this way. I am conservative. I am a conservative person by nature. Uh, I'm a, I am a conservationist. I believe in, in renewable resources. And I believe that we should conserve the resources that we have. We are way too wasteful. We are wasteful people. God. It is unbelievable how much waste we produce. Just saying. That has nothing to do with the political party. This is a spiritual channel. Spiritual guidance. And that's what I offer. I will not ever, not ever, offer political guidance. You're going to have to go elsewhere for that. Avoid Fox News and all that other said BS. I'm just saying. I mean, <clears throat> it's getting to the point I don't even watch the news no more. Because I'm a tag. Let me, let, me, let me tell you this. The world was supposed to end. We had a freaking solar eclipse just happen. It's still going on right now. And I remember 24 years ago, the world was supposed to end. Y2K. Some of y'all children don't remember that. Y'all probably was just coming out your mama's womb. But yeah, the world was supposed to end then too. You know, this whole earth been around for what? Four and a half billion years? Almost five billion years? For sure four and a half billion. I done come here a couple of times. Two or three times. You know, it's... It ain't going to end. It's not going to stop turning. It may adjust itself. 
you know, it may correct itself on its axis, whatever. But it ain't going to end. It's not going to stop. There is nothing we can do as a human being, as mankind, to destroy this earth. We kill all of us now. Hell, for a while, I thought COVID was going to kill everybody on earth. Shit. Sure. I was walking around with one of them fully encapsulated suits on, with a with a with a air pack on my back. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, this ain't nothing nice here. That damn Chinese virus, you know. Huh. Well, I was like, how the hell you think they invented that? What a freaking monkey, Charlie. But anyway, I know it wasn't a monkey; it was a bat. Oh, it was a bat. Oh, Lord, they worse. Mess around for a long time. I thought if I caught the COVID, I'd turn into a vampire. And teeth and stuff be like, I'll bite the hell out of Miss King. What? She be running then, boo. Oh, yeah, run with your old hip. Uh-huh. It's too late now. But anyway. Her and her friend Tammy. <laughs> her partner. Yeah. Trouble maker. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, where I was going with this. Yeah. We can't destroy the earth. Take my word for it. We can kill all of mankind. Mm -hmm. We can do that. We can kill all mankind. But that old earth gonna keep on turning. It's gonna keep on, it's gonna keep spinning. Ain't nothing we can do to stop. That's a fact. And it's going to heal itself. It might take another billion years. Another hundred thousand years. But it's going to heal itself. It's done that over millennium after millennium. See, the old earth is like a human body. We can injure it. But God fixed it where that earth's going to heal itself. It may... We may be the virus that's infecting the earth. And the earth's going to solve that problem by killing off all of humanity. Maybe that's what we ought to think about. And stop being so wasteful when it comes to using our resources. Anyway, I ain't going to comment on a what I am politically. I am... I'm a Christian. That's my political party. I'm a Christian. I'm a spiritualist. I am extremely spiritual. And uh, you know, party notwithstanding, I don't care. If you're a good man and you keep your word and you keep your promises and you do right by people, then that's all that matters. Because you see, in the spiritual world, the only thing that matters is right and wrong. The spiritual warriors into karma, that's all that matters is right and wrong. Good and evil. That's all we do is we fight against good and evil. And in politics today, I hate to say it, but there's a lot more evil than good. So, you know, it is, if somebody goes into politics and they pour as a preacher, not, not Joel Osteen type of preacher, I'm talking about them old country preachers, you know, they make like $100 a sermon, that's $400 a month where I'm from. <laughs> so anyway, or let's just make it as poor as a church mouse, whatever the case is. If they poke and they come out of there worth millions upon millions of dollars, it's probably just me. I'm probably the only one here in the United States that believes that. But there's just something wrong with that picture. It wasn't meant to be that way. It just wasn't. And with the technology we have today, they don't have to stay up there on the hill 
They can stay at their house and they can Zoom each other. And we don't have to pay them a whole lot of money. They can go get a job. That's my political stance. So anyway, next one up. Let's see what's the next one up. Oh, my shirt. Somebody asked me, uh, Tim. I, and, and I think Tim, I think I know the Tim. I worked with him already at, at Canal Bars. Canal Bars is a company I worked for before. I work for Golding Barge Line now. And uh, when I work for Canal Barge, I trip for Golding Barge Line. Trip, it means that I would just go over there and ride for a short amount of time, do my whatever time they needed me for on my off days, and then I would go back to Canal Barge. And uh, I'll tell you, Canal Barge is a premier company. Premier company. If you need a, if you're looking for employment, I'm going to plug my company, too, because we need good people also. So if you need employment first, go to goldingbargeline.com. And there's application tab. I think it's a careers tab. You hit that clear, the careers tab and fill out that. Just to follow the instruction. Start you off at that deckhand, and you work your way on up to captain. Been doing this a long time. I know a lot of balls that started with me as deckhands now and they captains. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is just a shirt. It's a comfortable shirt. It's one of those, I know it's, it's light and air, it, it breathes, so I love wearing them. Uh, I do love the company. Canalbars.com. Go to the end. They are, like I said, a premier company. Excellent benefits, excellent pay. Top of the line. Top of the line. Uh, Spiritual Warrior. 111. 1. 11. 11, 11. 1. She said, I don't know if she, I think it's a she. Maybe I ought to look before I see. Gender notwithstanding. Okay. It won. I asked, what was missing on my last video I did that I normally do that I didn't do? And blow the kiss. I also didn't say peace out for somebody else if they, they had, they may have put it in the comments because comments are popping up. I can't keep up harder. I'm about to harm somebody. Just keep up with the, the comments, Billy. Application time. Uh, what? Uh, let's see. Yep, I address. Oh, and they want to know. Somebody asked. I see who that was. Uh, who that was? Oh, anonymous two 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 three twos. Anonymous three twos. If that's the only pets we have. No. No, Levi and Harley, that's our pools. We have two pools. And then we got a cat named Blueberry. Blueberry, that's a long story. I'm going to tell you it be short, but I'm going to condense it. Blueberry is a feral cat that was in my truck. I went get some diesel with my truck and my tractor. I was pulling my tractor. And I went to the store to get me some diesel. When I got to the store, I could hear a piano. Meow. I thought they had a cat over there at the, in the store, in the back of the store, or somewhere around the store. I thought they had a cat. Meow. <laughs> so I got my diesel and I come back home. I parked my truck and my tractor in my trailer. And I pulled my truck underneath the, the canopy in the back at the Big Woods camp. And I got out of my truck. I heard meow. meow. I said, damn. Pop my hood of my truck, and I have like two batteries uh, for my truck, and that they had a pretty little uh, uh, kitten, like we call it Ali's own color, but it's kind of like blue and black and like striped. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but we call it maybe Brindle, which I would call that back where you know North R ten down here. We call it Ali's own color. And uh, 
And so I called her, and I had a little godchild in. I had a said, well, she's still my godchild, but she's big now. She's 16, 14. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I put the kitten down, the kitten run underneath my lawnmower and got on top of the blade of the lawnmower. And it was meowing and meowing, and Madison come out. Sure enough, she got the kitten out with some Vienna sausage or some potted meat or some, some tuna. I don't know what she used, but she got the kitten out. And, oh, Lord, she fell in love with the kitten. So I told my brother, I said, listen, you know how I feel about animals. Go take that to the vet. Because she had a little nick on her tail, like where the fan blade hit it. And... She's a feral cat, you know, she, she didn't have no shots or nothing that her mama probably coyotes ate or something. So anyway, they come back. That's blueberry. She just got, you can't really tell that her tail got a little piece missing. Now she didn't grow it up. She's, Lord have mercy, she's huge. And we got two fish. Yeah, my wife got two fish. So I got two dogs, one cat and two fishes. I got a farm over here, Hoss. Got a farm going on. And uh, I used to have a big dog outside. That was my cow dog, old Cash. Old Cash, he, he was a pit bull. And he was my, my, he was my cow dog. And uh, he, catch, he was a catch dog for me. Good dog. Best dog I ever had. Smart. I'm going to go ahead, I might as well go ahead and tell y'all a story about that too in the end of the video and then we'll start over and that's going to be my, my question and answer. I think that's the only one I got left. Uh, but anyway, old Cash, I'm going to tell you, he looked kind of like a boxer, but he was pit. Yeah. Cash didn't play. He didn't give you too much of a warning neither when I was around. <laughs> when I was around. You know, it, it, it was a tough old dog. Uh, I, I didn't fight my dogs, so please don't, don't, no comments about that. I never did that. He was strictly working cows and, and, and whatnot. He was my catch dog. And uh, it was putting some water lines in. There ain't no cut on illegals now please y'all don't flood me with no comments about that neither no cut on illegals but they was putting water lines in around here and uh you know say that water which is whatever you want to call it and the man the supervisor he said he come over here he said sir he said you on that property right yeah i said on that property mm -hmm. well what's up he said you might have and it wasn't from around here because i could tell from the accent Oh, yeah, I said, oh, anyway, he said, you mind if I park all my equipment over here on your property? Oh, hell no. I said, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I said, well, keep an eye on all your stuff. Now he said, okay, thank you. I sure appreciate it. So he, he parked all that stuff, bulldozers, backhoes, all that junk was right there. All that was there. Now, I'm going to say Mexican, okay, but I don't know if they was all Mexican. They might have been Guatemalan. They might have been... You know, who knows, Central America, South America, I don't know. But by our parents and by what they, they sound like, they sound like they was all some Mexicans. They all work for him, okay? Nice, bro, nice people, so nice. Well, Cash decided he's going to make partners with them, them cats. They go sit underneath my trees over there. And they eat their, their Vienna sausage and their potted meat or whatever they was eating, and their ball egg. Whew. They made partners with cash. They give cash some of that Vienna, and that's how he was. He was a good mall. That means greedy he, in, in Cajun French. He was good mall, that sucker. He would go over there and he would eat them, them Vietnamese. I mean, the Vietnamese. Now, y'all got me saying Vietnamese over here. That's not the Vietnamese, it was Mexicans. There might have been some, you never know. That old boy is probably paying cash. I, the IRS, I hope the IRS don't chase him down. No names to protect the innocent. Anyway, when it comes time to leave, <laughs> when it comes time to leave, 
they pack all that stuff up. They load all that stuff on some trailers. And Cash used to ride around the neighborhood with them in the back of that truck. Yeah, I had to fuss him a few times. Get your raggedy, no good. I knew to you, boy. What's wrong with you? I'll cut you. I'll snip them. What? Mm -mm -mm. Lord, have mercy. Anyway. When they left, cash left. That's all I'm going to say. And it wasn't in Mexicans, folks. It wasn't their fault. That was his fault. That was Cash's fault. See? They probably done took him over there to Tijuana. That's what I suspect. They done took him over there to Tijuana, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they got some dogs over there. Because Cash had a head on him. Lord have mercy. He had a head on him like a bull, like a Brahma bull. He, he was like massive. Big old dog, big old pit. He didn't play. I'm going to have to tell y'all the story about it. Y'all know where pits come. American Bull Terriers. That's what they really call you. If you call them a pit, your insurance rates go through the roof. Be like, what kind of dog that is, Mr. Reed? A Chihuahua. <laughs> That's a Chihuahua. Yeah, he's big for his age. He's big for what they call him. He's just one of them massive Chihuahuas. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. Yeah, cash left with them. He's over there in Tijuana. They got some chihuahuas that got heads on them. Like, they huge. They're as big as their body. They call them pit chihuahuas. Shut up. Anyway, that's my story about my dog. Yeah, he's he been gone. It took it hard when, he, when, they, when they left with him. And I, I, I wasn't shook. I wasn't mad because, like I said, I, I blamed it on him, not on them old boys. They, they some good fellas. They was just, they might have not known he was in the back of the truck. Yeah, they, they had like 12 of them in the back of the truck, but they might have not seen cash. But anyway. <laughs> Unbelievable. So we ain't going to get a reading done on this video. I'm already 23 minutes into this into this video. But uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, if you don't know where pits come from, don't, don't believe the line of BS that's on the internet and all this other garbage about pit bulls. Pit bulls and cur dogs, Catahoula leopards, they call, that's what they call Catahoula leopards, they cur dogs. They're just like pits, similar to pits, but they got a distinctive breed. Some of them are used for tracking, uh, track dogs, but they also catch. They are some serious catch dogs. And when I say catch, I mean they, like when I would work cows, my dog would catch a cow and he'd hold on to that cow. He'd, he'd dry the hell out of it. When a cow would leave the herd and you want that cow to come back to the herd. Well, when she leave the herd, the safe place to be in, in herd animals is with the herd, not away from the herd. If they get away from the herd, that's when they get caught by lions, tigers, pit bulls. I seen Cash. Yep, bring her back, Cash. He go out there and he go to nipping on that behind until she come back to the herd. <laughs> she was happy when she got back. I can promise you. Her ear was bloody. She was happy when she got back. So let me get that, give you the history on pit bulls, American. Bull Terriers. They were bred by slaves. A lot of people don't like that. Especially white people. <laughs> white people that are breeders, they don't like to hear that because they got some super DNA. They play with genetics and they got like the badass dogs. But them badass dogs come from slaves. Get over it. That's, that's exactly right. See, back in the day when they first got here, slave wasn't allowed, they wasn't allowed to own a gun, a weapon. Most they could have was a butcher knife. Just a fact. Garden tools. That's the most they could have. Anything that would threaten the plantation owner or anybody else, white folks, 
anybody that wasn't black. They couldn't have that. So what they did was they had to eat. And at first, if you went on a plantation, that was a mm, bad, tough place to be. It was a tough place to be. Mean, ornery owners, slave owners. They would punish them by rationing food. So the slaves developed dogs that could catch. In time, them dogs became known as pit bulls catch dogs and even then wild hogs was rampant they had wild hogs all over the place but not only wild hogs they had game and them them dogs would would pretty much grab and hold on to whatever they had until a slave got there and they'd cut his throat they couldn't shoot it because they didn't have a gun only way they could could kill it was to that dog had to hold, or that dogs had to hold it. And they cut the throat, bleed, bleed whatever they caught, and then they bring it back home and got, had a meal. A few meals, in fact, it was a big hog. A few meals. That's where the pit come along. Well, eventually, pretty much with any sport, it don't take a whole lot. One slave said to another slave, I got a badass dog. And he said, well, I got a badass dog too. My dog whoop your dog behind and all. Yeah, tear them biscuits off for you. My other slave, shoot, man. My dog got beans on the back of him that big. What? Well, they put them together and said, well, let's fight them. Let's see who got the baddest. First thing you know, they were fighting pits. That's where the pit came from. They were fighting their catch dogs just for sport. It wasn't to be mean and cruel. This was just like when in boxing. In boxing, when they whooped the hell out of each other or fighting, wrestling. It wasn't, it, it was a sport for them. It was a good time. And I doubt seriously that they allow one dog to kill another dog at that time. Whatever the, the score was to win, I don't have a clue. But they wouldn't risk losing a good catch dog in a fight. That's just a fact. So, that being said, uh, and, and then, once the slave owners got wind of what was going on, they took the dog, and it became their dog. Because it would belong to a slave, which made it the property of the slave owner, the plantation. So naturally, the slave owners, white folks, but they had a lot of slave owners. They had black slave owners. They had, I don't want to just pick on white folks. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But the majority was white. Well, okay. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> I'm white, but I'm Spanish. I come from Spanish bloodline. Yeah, the royalty over there in Spain, not south of the border, the, the black way over there. <laughs> okay, anyway, once the slave owners got wind of that, they took the dogs. And that's when, I believe, that's when they began to fight to the death. Dogs would fight until they died. And that's what became the disgusting part of it. And I don't care what anybody says, historians, just keep, keep your comment. I don't really want to know. I don't care. I don't really care. That's a fact. And if they would teach anything in black history related to what black history, this would be something that should be deleted from history and rewritten because it's not the white folk that made a pit bull. Or a, cur, or a cur dog, or any of those. It was the black folk. The ones that, that were slaves, they weren't even allowed to pull thing. They, they, didn't, they couldn't own a, a shotgun. You know, there was no defense. So, that being said, 
We're going to shut this down. I'll do another video for the reading. I apologize. It went way too long. I love y'all. Stay close to God. He wants to hear from you. Peace out.